And let's get that fourth key, even though I'm pretty sure we don't actually need it. I like how they don't even, like, make you a cry for that particular one. Oh, we did need it. Wait, what? Kilo Blaster? Never heard of that one. wonder if it's any good. Uh-oh. Looks like we're gonna have to jump. I oh, know, it's a trick. And now it's time for the bonus level. You guys will love this. It's an entire level built around jumping to, from single block to single block. And if you fall at any point in the second half, there's no way to get back up here, so, uh... You just have to leave. Also, I'm missing pretty much all the points. I'm not gonna... save attempt this to make sure I get to the top, because there, if I remember right, isn't actually anything worthwhile at the top. But well, let's see if I can get some video documented proof of that. And there we are, passing the midpoint. This actually isn't really that hard, it's just tedious. Which is actually a fairly apt description of the games in and of themselves. They have some good ideas, the sound effects are worth the price of admission. But they're just kinda tedious. And again, a lot of games back in the old DOS days were more tedious than uh, anything else, but... We played what we had back then, and it wasn't a lot. I'm sure those of you in the younger set don't really... might not really understand that sentiment that much, what with your halos and whatnot, but, uh... When all you got's a rock, you play with a rock, essentially. Usually by throwing it at somebody's head very hard so that they fall down. They bleed a bit. Again, that might have been me and my friends. Yeah, not worth doing this at all, but, uh... There you go. I've completed the bonus section of Joel the Jungle 2. And now we're going into Cloud Cuckoo Land. Which is more aptly described as the land of awful background textures. And semi-annoying kind of puzzle things. Ha! Winners don't lose frogs. That's almost funny. Actually, it's not even remotely funny. Winners also murder inchworms. That's just the way it goes. Sorry, guys. And by sorry, I'm not actually sorry. I hate you guys, and I hope you all die. And now you're all dead. I feel better now. Is there any reason to actually go over here to the edge of this? No, it's just apples. Okay. And here's a spike pit. Let's not fall on the spites. The spites? The spikes. I almost did something stupid, but I managed to save it. And again. My sense of timing is completely impeccable. Shit, fuck that up completely. There we go. Once again, not really a puzzle, just kind of annoying. Also, kind of an obnoxious elevator maze. But it's not that bad. All that so we can get a jump power-up so we can get back out of the maze we went into in the first place. I'm pretty sure you also need it somewhere else, but I don't actually remember. And now we're a bird. For no reason other than to do that. Well, that was retarded. Okay, here we go. And this one, once again, falls into the not actually a maze, but just kind of annoying deal.
And now it's done. Did I say maze? I meant puzzle. I'm sure you figured that out, though. And after smashing Jill into a fine pace, we get a kind of weird level title. For, if I remember right, the last level, which is a retarded jumping puzzle. What a shock. Also featuring a slug that we can't kill. Guess how many of these uh, jump pops are gonna have by the end of this? It's a lot. I could, in theory, be making a lot wider jumps here, but that actually just makes it way easier to uh, land right on one of those spike things. Which is an instant kill, as we all know. And now that we're done jumping around this so-called sticky situation, we have to find a bunch of keys on the uh, vines. Because that's literally the only puzzle this game has. And yet I'm still fond of it for some reason. Yeah. I'm also fond of almost killing myself in really stupid ways. But everybody knew that already. I think there's another key or two floating around somewhere. Where are they? Uh oh. Or I can just get hit constantly, I guess. That works too. Is it four or was there a fifth one? I think there might be a fifth one over here somewhere. Yeah. Well, let's find out. Oh no, it was just four. Oh yes, this. This is great. This is like the epitome of dick moves in a video game. May not the epitome, but one of the very earliest for examples. Think fast! And I fucked it up. But you can see the sign down there. You got all four keys, right? Yeah, if you missed any of them... You have to kill yourself, because there's doors down there, and there's no way back up. And this is actually a little tricky, just because you have to have... ...excellent timing to make that work. You got all four keys, didn't you? Though I didn't know I needed them the first time, Game. Thanks for telling me. Yeah, that, that happened to me. I'm not bitter or anything, but yeah, that happened to me. Freaking game developers. And now we're back on the key hunt. There we go. And the key hunt this time includes a lot of obnoxious switch manipulation. Because that's always fun, right? Luckily never need to go in there again. And now we're going to the bat ca- uh, hangar. The bat hangar. Not the bat cave. The bat cave is owned by somebody else, and therefore we can't be using that. But it does have a lot of bats in it, who I think are also new uh, sprites for this game. And I do gotta say, they actually look pretty good. They are big, threatening bats, and uh, that's exactly what they're supposed to be. It'd be better if you're getting attacked by a bunch of Batman, though. But that might just be me. So you might be wondering why we're bothering to do this ridiculous key hunt this time. Perhaps you noticed all the lava. If you did, you might be able to figure out what the trick's gonna be. Also, this one's guarded by the tiniest little bouncing pea. Ow. Stupid jerk pea. Over here, there might be something else we need. I don't remember 100%. Is there a key up here? Yeah, there's a key up here. And Jill has to have keys, that's why she goes. But she gets one. Sounding very much like a man. But that's okay. Up here. Now this is where all the gems go to. Gotcha. So that means we have all the keys and can go down and do the uh, thing I've been hitting at. Turn into a firebird. So 
so I can swim around in the fire and get all the other stuff. By which, of course, I mean, like, seven gems. I don't need to go in here. All the rest of them, I believe, are in here. The bat hanger. And yeah, you can just fall right through those uh, floors as a, as a firebird. No, oh, I missed... a... gem over there. I'll get that on the way back out. Because there's a bunch of them in here. Yeah, I'd rather get those first. Seeing as how I'm here and all. This place actually seems like it's kind of designed for you to go the proper way around, but... that's not how I roll. Let's go get that other key I missed. I always forget about that one that's here. Because this place is just so far away from the rest of them. All by its lonesome. It's a sad story. Gems need a lot of company or else they die. Kind of like lovebirds. I think that's how lovebirds work, right? I don't know anything about anything. But with that, we are pretty much at the end of the game. Actually, we are at the end of the game. Hope you can read that text in the background, because that's our story. For what's happening here. Wait a minute, what's in there? Oh. A gem. And... We escaped the underground, most of which wasn't underground. I also love that Jill's first action is to ram herself face first into a brick. And yeah, we did all that stuff for basically no reason. The game doesn't give us a reason for why we did this. We just landed in Magic Mushroom Land, ate the Magic Mushrooms, saw some crazy trips, and uh. And we left. That's that. And all of a sudden, next time, there's a prince to save, which hasn't been mentioned up to this point at all, aside from in the end of the second game, where they also mention that there's a third game called Jill Saves the Prince. And yet they have story screens in both games, but they have not made any sort of story here. Hey, I beat my best score. And with that, I bid you all adieu.